welcome to another CAD Dimensions Tech Tip. My name is Jesse. In this tip, we'll move forward onto the parts and features tips. And in this section, we're gonna be talking about working with intersecting thin features. So we'll take a look at creating something like this fuel rail, where we have two kind of parallel sections that are thin features that are intersected by this more interesting shape. Now, of course, there's a number of different ways that we could do this in SolidWorks, maybe build them as solids and shell them or something like that. But in this tip, we'll be going over working with these uh, using surfacing tools. Now, every year, for some reason, I always have a tip that involves projecting things together. And this year is no exception. So we'll use a projected curve to create this interesting geometry, and we'll use simple extrudes to create these. The shape of this rail as it crosses the intake is kind of arced from the front and sort of an interesting curve S-bend from the top. Now let's get started. Let me hide these images and we'll get moving. I've set up some sketches already just based on the parameters that we have. Again, I just kind of made these up to look something similar to what we're trying to create. Let's start this off by creating the parallel rails on the sides. I'll move over to my surfacing tab, and from here we'll use the extruded surface. Now again, the extruded surface works just like an extruded solid. It will just create an infinitely thin shape. I'm going to add this profile into my contours, and we'll create both of these at once. I'll make this a mid-plane extrusion, and we'll just stretch this out to some length. This length can be somewhat arbitrary at this point. We'll accept and continue on to the more complex shape across the top. Now, as you can see in my tree, what this has done is this has created two separate surface bodies. I have my surface bodies folder turned on in the tree by default so I can always see it. I tend to do a lot of surfacing work. The default behavior in SolidWorks is to allow this folder to show as soon as you get a surface body. So at this point, you would see the surface bodies folder show up and you would see two surface bodies from within here. Let's create the section across the top. Now again, we can see that the front section was something of an arc shape. Again, if we look from the top, I've drawn an arc from center to center in the shape that I've needed. In the top view, we see that I've created a spline mimicking the shape that I need to follow the groove over the intake. In this case, I've just estimated these shapes, but these could be exact as you need them to be. In order to combine these two shapes together, what we'll do is we'll use a projection curve. From my surfaces or features tab, I'll come up to curves and down to projection curve. Once in projection curve, you'll find an option in here that will allow you to project a sketch onto a sketch, and that's what we're looking for here. I'll select my two curves, we get a preview, and I'll right click to accept. Now you can see this has created a complex curve for me very quickly. In order to create the tube that goes across, we'll simply sweep along this path. As of SOLIDWORKS 2015, if our path is circular, we don't have to create this as a sketch. In order to create this, I'll simply move up to my sweep. I'll choose circular profile, select my path, and give this a diameter. Now again, the surface sweep works just like it would as a solid, but will create a zero thickness shape. Essentially, we're just creating a face. Let's hide this curve just to get it out of our way. And now we'll connect these shapes together. Now here's where I see a benefit in doing something like this in surfacing. We can see that the intersection of the two of these shapes is where things would get tricky. If we had created these as two thin solids, we'd have to figure out how to get this material out as well as clear out the holes in both directions. Since they're just surfaces, I have much more flexibility. At this point, I'll trim the three shapes together. In order to do that, I'll use my trim surface tool. We use a mutual trim and use the surfaces themselves as the trim tool. My trimming surfaces will be all three. And in this case, my options are easier to select as keep selections. I'll select the sections I want to keep. And here we can see only the sections that will be left behind. I can toggle my preview options just to make sure I'm getting what I expect. From here, I'll accept, and I've now merged the three of these bodies together, trimming them into one surface body. Let's create a section view and see what we've done. Looking at one of these intersection points, 
you can see that the surfaces are now trimmed together, we don't have any additional material, and they meet nicely at the intersection point. Now again, working with surfacing has some benefits. If I want to create a blend between the two of these shapes and make sure that the thickness stays constant throughout that blend, we can do that at this point as well. From here, I'll select the fillet tool, select my edge, and I'll select the edge on the other side as well. We'll set a value. And we'll say OK. Now we can add some thickness to this model by using the Thicken tool. From the surfacing toolbar, I'll select Thicken, I'll select my surface, and I'll choose which offset I need. In this case, offsetting to the inside is what I'm looking for. Here we'll accept. Again, if we inspect the same section, we'll see that we now have thickness, and that thickness is maintained throughout that blend up and into the other shape. Now a common requirement in working with geometry like this is finding the internal volume. And that's very easy in SOLIDWORKS as well. All I'll do is create something that will cap off the ends of these rails and we'll let SOLIDWORKS do the rest of the work. From here I'll go to Reference Geometry, select Plane, and I'll select the end faces of the rails. I'll set my offset to zero, and we'll say OK. Let's do the same on the other side. Now remember, these planes are infinite, but if you wanted to visualize this a little bit better, you could spread these over to the other side. Here we can see how these planes would cap off both ends. To create the internal region, we'll simply use our intersect tool. I'll move back to the Features tab, and from Features, I'll select Intersect. With Intersect selected, I'll select my two planes, as well as my solid body, and we'll intersect the three of these items. The Intersect tool looks for volume in the model. Now you can see in this case, it's found the solid region, as well as the hollow region, capped off by the two of these planes. Here, I'll uncheck Merge Result, since I want to keep that body separate, and we'll say OK. At this point, I can hide these two planes, and we can now see that we have two solid bodies, the interior and the exterior. At this point, we can inspect the intersection, and this will represent the fluid volume. Of course, we can also use this for tools like our mass properties, and have this apply only to this body. Let's apply appearance only to the fluid region. Gasoline seems appropriate, and I'll select this for the body only. Well, I hope this tip helps you to create complex, thin-walled geometry, and we'll see you next week. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below. 